So this is section 1.5, which is parametric relations and inverses. So we are going to learn about relations parametrically and inverse relations and inverse functions. Okay. So example one is defining a function parametrically. So consider the set of all order pair x and y defined by the equation x equals t minus one and y equals t squared plus two. So you can see, I kind of shortcutted this. If you look in the notes, um, we can make a table. So we can plug in values of negative three to three um, and we can get our x values and then we can get our y values. So x is our t value minus one and y is t squared plus two. So that's going to give us our set of points. Okay, so then the next part is um, how we could get an equation that would define this. So if we think about it, so if we take our x equation and we solve it for t, we can say that t is equal to x plus 1. And I will tell you, if you're comparing this to the paper notes, I just got myself confused for a second. Um, the example is slightly different than the example in the notes. So don't follow this and think it's the same numbers as the defining a function parametrically example in the paper notes. Okay, so, um, so we can say t is x plus 1, and then we have y is equal to t squared plus 2. So we can substitute in and we can say, okay, so this would be x plus 1 squared plus 2. Okay, and then we can simplify that. So we can foil out x plus 1. So we get x plus 1, x plus 1, plus 2. So that would be x squared plus 1x plus 1x. So that would be plus 2x plus 1 plus 2. So our equation would be x squared plus 2x plus 3. So that equation can define this function. So that's one way to look at parametric. Um, so if we have a parametric function where we have a defined x and a defined y, you can make a table to find the um, point values and you can use the, and then you can substitute to find the equation. Okay. Inverse relation. So an ordered pair AB is in a relation if and only the pair BA is in the inverse relation. So um, basically we flip the X and the Y when we're talking about inverses. The horizontal line test, so it's just like we use the vertical line test to determine if something is a function. We use the horizontal line test to determine if the inverse relation is a function. Okay, so what that means is like if I have um, a cubic and I look, that's going to, everywhere I pass a vertical line, I'm only going to touch it one spot. So this is what we call one-to-one. -one. And this function would only, its inverse of that function would be a function as well. Okay. And then if I had like a parabola and I pass a vertical line, that's hitting in two spots. So that's what we call many-to-one. So that means um, we can have an inverse relation for a parabola, but the inverse would not be a function is what that means. And we can think about that because remember inverses are reflected over the line y equals x. So if you reflect a parabola over the line y equals x, you're going to not pass the vertical line test. Okay. So so the horizontal line test determines if it's one to one or many to one and determines if it if the function inverse is also a function. Okay, Ugh. tripping up over my words today. Okay, so example four, finding an inverse function algebraically. Okay, so if we have a function like f of x equals 2x over x minus one, um, the way that we find the inverse algebraically is first of all, I'm going to change f of x to y. And then we switch the x and the y. So I'd write this as x equals 2y over y minus 1. And we're going to solve for y. So the first thing I need to do is multiply both sides by y minus 1. So then I have, I'm going to distribute over here. So I would have xy 
minus x equals 2y. Then I need to get the y's on the same side because I'm going to need to factor. So I'm going to subtract xy from both sides. So now I have negative x equals 2y minus xy. So I'm going to draw an arrow up here. So I'm going to keep the left on the right hand side. I'm going to factor out a y. So that would be 2 minus x. So then I'm going to divide by 2, oops, by 2 minus x. So that would mean that cancels. So I would have y equals negative x over 2 minus x. So then we would rewrite it using inverse notation, which is f to the negative 1 of x equals negative x over 2 minus x. So that would be our inverse function. So again, how you find it algebraically, you switch the x and the y and solve for y. Okay, finding an inverse function graphically. So if you have a graph and you want to find the inverse, so what I already talked about earlier is that it's going to reflect over this line y equals x. And so every point on your function, the inverse would be that point flipped. So like if we have this point right here, which is the point um, 0, 1, then that means 1, 0 is going to be on our inverse graph. This point right here would be 1, 2, so 2, 1. Um, let's see if we can find other points. This would be negative 1, 0, so 0, negative 1. And then negative 2, negative 1. Four, kind of almost so um, negative 4 negative 2 two right there okay so you can kind of see this is gonna look like this my sketch is not great but you can see how it's reflected over that line y equals x so you can take points on your existing function flip the points and then graph that to find the inverse Oh, is it one-to-one? -one? I forgot that answer. Okay, got to read the directions. Is f a one-to-one -one function? The answer is yes, because it passes the horizontal line test. So that, um, you can see right there, is also a function. Okay, and this is a better graph than my awful sketch, but kind of looks the same. <laughs> okay. So inverse composition rule. So if a function is one-to-one -one with an inverse function, if and only if, so you can verify that two functions are inverses by taking f of g and then taking g of f, and they should equal x. So um, let's see, do we have an example of that? We do. Okay, so we're going to verify that f and g are inverse functions. So I'm going to start with f of g of x. So that means I'm plugging g into f. So that would be the cube root of x minus 2 cubed plus 2. So what people like to do on this um, is just cross out everything and say it equals x. But I want to show algebraically that they equal x. So I want to take it step at a time. So the first thing that cancels here is the cube and the cube root cancel. So then I'm left with x minus 2 plus 2. And then the 2's cancel, so I'm just left with x. And then in order to truly verify, you have to do the opposite. You have to do g of f of x. So this time I'm going to plug f into g. So be the cube root of x cubed plus 2 minus 2. And then again, we're going to show step by step. So the first thing that we cancel would be the 2's. So then I'd have the cube root of x cubed, then the cube root and cube cancel, and I have x. So by showing that they both equal x, that verifies that these two functions are inverses. Okay, so that is section 1.5. Let me know if you have any questions.